In December 1970, small astronomy satellite Uhuru launches into space on a quest to seek out X-rays. X-rays are extremely energetic electromagnetic waves, so basically like light on steroids. We don't detect X-rays on Earth because the atmosphere protects us, which is bad for X-ray astronomers. It's very good for humans in general because X-rays are bad for you. In tiny doses, we use X-rays for medical purposes, allowing us to see through flesh to diagnose illness. Higher energy X-rays can be focused to kill cancer cells. But above Earth, Uhuru detects a source of X-rays billions of times more powerful than the energy needed to kill all life on this planet. It finds this source of X-rays not coming from the sun or any nearby things, but from some place in space, hundreds, maybe thousands of light years away. The death ray is coming from the constellation of Cygnus. Scientists label the source of the X-rays Cygnus X1, but no one can see it. What the heck is that? That can't be just another star. They don't make enough X-rays for us to see from 1,000 light years away. In terms of Cygnus X1, we just didn't understand exactly what it was. What was producing those X-rays? It wasn't stars. Could it be some sort of, I don't know, extraterrestrial activity? Could it be interstellar warfare using advanced weapons? It may sound like science fiction, but X-ray weapons exist. That was part of Ronald Reagan's Star Wars program. Defend ourselves from nuclear attack. One of its elements was to use microatomic bombs in just the right way so that their explosion powered a laser made of X-rays. Part of our weapons research focuses on lasers. We're using very powerful X-rays to destroy guided missiles. Now think about an older civilization than ours that's been around for millions of years with lasers and what they could do. I hope they'll be wise enough to be careful and to only use it when it's really, really needed. But if Cygnus X-1 is a weapon, it's part of a very destructive war. The energy it's producing is powerful enough to destroy any civilization attempting to harness it. Once you fire it, man, uh, you just gotta leave fast. But the Cygnus X-1 force is more likely to be natural. In 2009, scientists using high-powered radio telescopes received a clue about what that force could be. It was dark. It wasn't emitting any light, and yet there was all this X-ray radiation coming from it. This was not interstellar warfare. This was the result of a black hole. This is the most powerful force in the cosmos. A collapsed dead star consuming everything around it. All of that mass gathered in there is pulling space-time into a funnel so that it's so intense that light that tries to escape, it never makes it. The black hole's gravity is so powerful that it's tearing a neighboring star apart. As the star is consumed, its superheated matter produces X-rays, and this creates the X-ray pulse of Cygnus X1. Slowly, the material that makes up that star is being sucked into the black hole. Before it finally succumbs to the black hole's awesome power. In 2006, the 13th crew arrives at the International Space Station. Over the next six months, they orbit Earth almost 3,000 times. NASA astronaut and keen photographer Jeff Williams documents everything. From life inside the station, to the deserts, volcanoes, weather systems on Earth, and the captivating light show at the top of the world. What is the most beautiful thing that we get to see from space? The aurora. Anytime we're by the aurora, nobody's working. Everybody's at the window. But when Jeff Williams photographs the aurora, he 
captures more than its inner light. He snaps something straight out of science fiction. It looks just like a spacecraft parked in our Aurora. Game changer. A starship wouldn't accidentally hover in the sky above the northern lights. The Aurora Borealis is an electromagnetic phenomenon. Is it feasible, and I believe it is, that this craft can be actually refueling wirelessly from being inside the Aurora Borealis? And if so, does that mean that there are energy sources all around us? Maybe we can't use them, but extraterrestrials can. Any anomaly in the Earth's magnetic field could be dangerous if it affected its stability. because the aurora are more than a pretty light show. They're patterns of force caused by the Earth's magnetic field. They protect the planet from charged particles sent hurtling through space by solar explosions. If the Earth's magnetic field failed, we on the, the surface of the planet would be exposed to whatever radiation was coming from the sun. If it weren't for our own magnetic field, around our planet, diverting all these charged particles down to the poles where they make beautiful aurorae. Well, we'd be in trouble here on the Earth's surface. Solar physicists don't believe this is an alien vessel assigned to Earth. It's not a starship. <laughs> I'm afraid that's the least likely explanation. Perhaps it was a, a cosmic ray hit that did some damage to the detector in the camera. It seems like all the best stuff is explained away with cosmic rays. One little thing we saw just for a moment, what could it be? Cosmic rays is a little too easy of an explanation for that. No one knows if a starship really hovered over the aurora, but it was gone in the wink of an eye. Perhaps it had fulfilled its mission and returned home. You know, I, I grew up on science fiction, not science. Uh, so my first thought when I see the little dark spot in the picture, I'm thinking maybe this is someone watching. And then the scientist in me takes over and I start looking for explanations. But every now and then, there aren't any good explanations. And that's where the exciting mythology is.